So you're moving on and you're getting on with your life and plan. Out of nowhere, there's this communication. You hear from the narcissist. Why are they doing this? Why are they getting in contact? They have no right, but they do. And what do you do? What do you do when you start to move on and then you hear from the narcissist? This is what we're gonna be talking about in the video. Hey everyone and welcome back. I hope that you're all doing really well. So in today's video, all right, today's video, we're talking about what happens when you start to move on, right? You've got your life back together. You know, you're moving on. You've realized who they are, what they have done, and you're doing the healing work and you're getting your life back together. And then you hear from them. There's a reason that they do this. There's a reason why they get back in contact with you when you start to move on. And let's face it, they can't handle this. They cannot handle the fact in your life without them. But just before I'm gonna discuss this video, I'm just gonna say that I do go live on this channel once a week. And if you're interested in joining the live stream, which I would really love you to, it's absolutely free. Guys, come on over, what have you got to lose? We've got a really amazing supportive community. We have so much fun on these lives. We do have a vibe, it is a vibe. These lives are a vibe. And if you have a question or there's something on your mind, get it into the live chat because I might be answering or the community might be answering it. Guys, just come on over, you'll see. It is so much fun. And also do check the community tab because I do post in there sometimes like updates and things like that. So I'd love it if you were to join the live stream. Right, okay, let me get comfortable. This, all right, this is the most annoying, all right? I, I don't know, like, you know, you, you've got your life back together. You're not thinking about them. And I know, guys, I know how hard it has been for you to forget, to stop thinking about them. You know, this isn't easy. This is not easy, trying to get over someone, full stop, but then, then being a narcissist as well. And then you're trauma bonded on top, hello, trauma bonded on top. This isn't easy, right? I completely understand. This is not easy at all. So, and then this is what we're gonna be talking about. The narcissist can't stand the fact that you are moving on in your life. They cannot deal with the fact that you are moving on, which is why you probably have heard from them, which then says to me, you've probably been watching me or you've probably been following what I've been doing, but I didn't know that you were doing that. So it's probably been from a fake account. So I know that's a whole nother level of being freaked out or scared by what they have done. They've always been doing this, guys. I've talked about this a lot in the videos that this is, this is what they do. They, they're just watching that from fake accounts, they're trying to see like, what are you doing? Trying to see if they can affect you in some way. And so now they see that you're getting on. It might be, do you know what? It might be that you have been going out with your friends more, you know, you're looking happier. You know, you're, you're trying to get your life back together. Or it might be that actually, you know what? You're starting to move on with another relationship. You've met someone that you really like. They're not narcissistic. And you're thinking, yeah, you know, like maybe I could get my life back together after this traumatic experience with this person. Yeah, and the narcissist will strike. They can't deal with the fact that you are moving forward. They're very jealous. Okay, jealousy is something that they live with, jealousy and guilt. The fact that you are moving forward, this isn't something that they can understand and deal with. You see, because in their minds, they believe that you belong to them. Oh yes, my friends, you belong to them. You are their property. This is why they are behaving in this way. They objectify people, so they see you as an object. You know, like, hold on. This remote for the air conditioning, okay? It's an object. Do you know what? I really, really like this because I can control the temperature in the room with the air conditioning thing. Remote, sorry, the remote, okay? And it serves a purpose for me. I really love it because I can do so much with it. I don't feel so hot but I'm not in love with this remote. You see, it's, it's objectification. 
you're an object, you're there to provide something. And the reason why they're getting in contact with you is because they're wanting something from you. And yes, my friends, you've guessed it. It is attention. It is validation. They want you to make them feel good. If you've done it once before, you can do it again. You've had feelings for them before. This is how they think. You've had feelings for them before. They're going to want it again. So you're there to serve a purpose, like the air conditioning remote. It's there to serve a purpose. It's an object. You see, the reason why this happens is because a narcissist isn't connected to themselves. All right, when you're not connected to yourself, how can you connect to another person? How can you give yourself to another person? It doesn't work like that, does it? If you're not connected, you cannot have empathy for another person. You can't understand social and emotional cues because you're not connected within that. You're not socially connected. You're not in a community. Like you, you're not, you don't have that ability to be able to do that. And the only reason why they've dis disconnected from that is because of trauma. They disconnect from it because it's the trauma that they have had. All right, and so they stop having empathy. And that happens literally because of being able to protect themselves. You don't just correct it. You don't just stop for one moment and then it comes back. You know yourselves that when you've been traumatized, you just feel empty. You don't feel like you can connect to anything. But the thing, the difference is with you guys is you have been able to do it before. You can get it back. You can do it again through therapy, through, through time, being able to understand your emotions. The narcissist doesn't do that. They cannot do that. So the fact that they're seeing you moving on, they're, they're not liking this because you belong to them. You're there to serve them a purpose. And when this happens, they're going to try and stop that from happening. And this is why they're getting in contact with you. For, for some of you, they don't get in contact. But be, but, but be rest assured that they are jealous, that they can't stand the fact that you are moving forward. They still want you to be able to, you know, like when they call you, they, that you are going to give them validation that you are going to give them something, this, this attention. When you're with someone else or when you're happier, you see through the game. So they know that it's a lost cause. They know that that's it. So they're not going to be able to do that. And you see, this is the thing. This is exactly what happens. They can't cope with it, which is why they are reaching out to try and affect you in some way, try to get your attention. And that is the thing, my friends. You have to understand that when they are contacting you, they want something from you, something that you can provide them, something that you can give them. And whilst it is quite harmless, you know, they've got in contact with you, whilst it is quite harmless and you're thinking, yeah, you know what, that's okay. Like maybe I will be able to do that. I can do that for them. But at what cost? At what cost? You know, you answer that message or you answer that phone call. You thinking, yeah, I'm going to have my boundaries. I'm going to be able to push them away. But sometimes we still long for that. Sometimes if we haven't healed and we still know that they can affect us, we're still going to be dragged back into that cycle. So you have to know, you have to decide for yourself where you are in all of this. I can't say to you, don't answer the phone call, don't contact, don't, don't anything, because this really is your journey. But what you have to consider is, are you ready for this? Are you ready for if they say they want something from you or they want to meet up or they want, or they want to talk to you? Are you going to be all right after that phone call or after that meetup? Because it can affect you like days after. So you, it's up to you to decide whether this is going to be a smart move for you. And also the other thing you need to decide is, if you've moved forward this far, all right, having them back in your life, what's that going to do to you? How is that going to make your life better for you? So these are the things that you really need to consider. Do you really want to go in this cycle again? If you are someone that is going through this, please know that I do offer one-to-one -one consultations. And if you're interested, 
please see the description box below. I've also got a mentorship and a journal club, which I post in there every single Monday. And if you're interested in joining, again, please see the description box below. I've also got a Discord server, which is absolutely free for you to join. It's a community of like-minded individuals. And if you're interested in joining, please see the link in the description box below. Guys, I really hope this video helps. What you have to understand is that they don't like you moving on. And it's not because they have changed and they think that they can make you happy again. They can't. They are who they are. They're not going to change. And it doesn't happen in that way. And for you to free yourself from this, really, it's about having no communication with this person because it's not going to change in any way. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video. Goodbye.